In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. For he is the merciful lamb that was slain for you to take away your sin. It's what Jesus accomplished at the cross for you. It's what he accomplished by the shedding of his blood. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. I just want to thank the viewing audience, those that have been faithful watching these programs, learning the Word of God. And if this is the very first time that you have turned on this channel to watch this program, just stay tuned throughout this program. You're going to be touched by the Lord today. I'd like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the viewing audience. I thank you for their families, their children, their homes, Lord. I ask that you would pour out your spirit upon them, Father, and reveal, reveal yourself to them, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask, Lord, that you touch and heal people today, Father, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. So glad that you're tuning in with this program. Today I'm going to be ministering on reviving the heart. Reviving the heart of the humble. If you have a Bible there, I'd like for you to go to Isaiah 57, verse 15. And it states, For thus saith the high and the lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in a high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble, to revive the heart of the contrite ones. See, when a person's heart is contrite, it becomes open, open to receive from God because it comes with a heart of contrition before the Lord, a heart that's looking only to the Lord to be healed and delivered and to be restored. It may be a heart that's been crushed by the circumstances of life, a heart that's been bruised by abuse and violence. It may be a heart that is grieving over the loss of a loved one or a divorce. It could be a heart that has lost everything And all you can do is look up. God heals the grief and the sorrow of the heart of man. He came to heal the broken in heart. He came to set at liberty those that have been bruised. He came to set you free. And that freedom only comes through receiving him. That freedom only comes when you're seeking him with all your heart and you will find him. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, came from heaven's glory, born of a virgin, anointed by the Holy Spirit at the river Jordan. And he declared his father, his father's glory. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those that have been bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, to give recovery to the sight of the blind. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love and his love is so deep it's deeper than any ocean. But he reaches into the heart of man that their heart is so crushed, the heart that's been broken to a million pieces, 
and he breathes brand new life on that heart and he heals that broken heart that had an open wound, an open wound from the past of rejection, grief, and sorrow, a heart that has forsaken God because of brokenness inside. God's calling you unto himself. God's calling you unto himself. He calls you with the holy calling. When we are in a miry pit and a miry clay, he takes us out of that miry clay and miry pit, and he sets our feet upon the rock Christ Jesus to stay. Jesus is our rock. He's the rock. He's the chief cornerstone. He is the rock of our salvation. Hallelujah. That word in Isaiah 57, 15, he will revive the heart of the contrite. That word contrite in the Hebrew is the word daka, D-A-K-A, to crumble, to bruise, literally or figuratively, to beat to pieces, break, in pieces, bruise, contrite, crush, destroy, humble, oppress, and smite. See, there's inner wounds inside of people's hearts, inner wounds from the past. The Lord knows everything about your life, even before you were in your mother's womb. He knows every detail about your life. There's nothing hidden before the eyes of the Lord. But he reaches into your heart and he says, come and follow me. He's the one that can revive your heart and breathe the newness of his spirit, the spirit of Christ inside your heart to be born again. And the word revive in that scripture he revives the heart of the contrite ones. Is the Hebrew word, and it means to give, to promise life, to nourish up, to preserve alive, to quicken, to recover, to repair, to restore to life, revive. To save, alive, life, lives, surely to be made whole. We are living in a time in the earth where death is rampant. The destruction of the unborn in the womb through abortion, through the killing of Christians, beheading of Christians, crucifying children to crosses, persecuting Christians, innocent people. Innocent people are being destroyed by the enemy. That enemy is the enemy of darkness. That enemy is the spirit of Antichrist that is against Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Jesus came for you to deliver you from the spirit of darkness, from the spirit of Antichrist. He came to deliver you and to make you totally free. That he puts inside of your heart a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Fear will no longer be your enemy. Because the fear of God will come into your heart, which turns your heart away from evil, causes your heart to be humble and full of humility before God. Because you begin to acknowledge that you are a sinner and in need of a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave life for your soul on the cross. Hallelujah. 
he poured out his soul unto death. And that death was on the cross. He freely laid his body on the cross and he took it up again. This commandment he received from his father. He shed holy blood, innocent blood in your place. He took the judgment of the world, the sin of mankind upon himself. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, the unrighteous man, his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes your transgressions from you. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You might have been in a situation in your life of abuse your whole entire life. You were in a situation where your family members, whoever was abusing you, were under the spirit of darkness. They were a child of the devil. But God is shedding the light of the truth of the gospel into your heart to forgive those that had abused you, to forgive those that have rejected you, and to be let go of yesterday. Turn away from the things that gripped your heart with grief. And cast every care and burden upon the Lord because he cares for you. And he will lift that heavy burden off of you. And he will reveal himself to you that he's almighty God. That he's everlasting father. And that there's nothing too hard for him to do. He'll take you out of the dung hill. And he will set your feet upon the rock Christ Jesus. He will anoint your head with fresh oil. He will open your mouth and fill it with laughter again. Where there was sorrow and grief and depression and oppression, he'll fill you with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's the God that I serve. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. See, when a person fully comes to Christ, it's godly sorrow that leadeth us to a repentant heart to salvation in Christ Jesus. A heart that has never repented before God is a false conversion. They're drawing nigh to God with their lips, but the heart is far from Him because their heart is full of idolatry, thievery, adultery, fornication, maliciousness. See, God sees the heart. He, he does not come into a non-repentant heart. When he gave a commission to the apostles after he was risen from the dead to go to Jerusalem, he told them to preach repentance and remission of sin to all the nations of the world. And when he spoke that, that's exactly what the apostles did. Because in Jesus' earthly ministry, he called sinners to repentance. He didn't call the righteous, he called sinners to repentance. People that thought they were righteous because of obeying the law were actually sinners. Because they rejected Christ. They didn't receive him. The Bible says as many as received him, 
To them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. So the Bible goes on to say in Isaiah 57, verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. In the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I am the way, not a way, the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. The reason Jesus said that is because he received a commandment from his Father to lay his body on that cross and to take it up again, that commandment he received from his Father. The Bible also says in Hebrews that he tasted death for every man. So Isaiah 57, verse 9, it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, the word of God when you read the Word of God and everything in Jesus' ministry, His Word was His thoughts from His Father. Because His Father gave Him a commandment what to say and what to speak. And His commandment is life everlasting. And it says here in verse 10 of Isaiah 57, Excuse me, Isaiah 55. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but waters the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. For you shall go out with joy, you shall be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be uh, to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Jesus Christ is the one that can revive your heart. Without him, you will never have a revived heart. It's not about your church reviving your heart. It's not about another person reviving your heart. It's the one that was crucified for you on Calvary's cross to bring a, a circumcision inside of your heart when you repent before God of your sins and turn your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and surrender denying yourself because self always wants to promote itself self uh, is prideful self is boasting self is all about you and your plans in life it's all about the condition of your heart but when you deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus Christ. You're identifying that he came for you and laid his life upon the cross and that he shed innocent blood to forgive you and he's the justifier of the unjust and he's the only one that can impart his righteousness into your heart because he took the penalty and the judgment of sin upon himself and he delivered you out from under the law so he fulfilled the law and the prophets Jesus was risen from the dead 
by the power of God, the power, the faith, and operation of God, he was risen from the dead, and he appeared to the apostles and disciples for 40 days. And he gave the great commission to the apostles and to his disciples to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city of God. They went to Jerusalem, to the upper room, that's in Acts 1, and they waited for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, and they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came a rushing mighty wind from heaven. It filled the whole house where they were sitting in Acts chapter 2. And cloven tongues of fire sat upon their heads, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Devout Jewish men from other nations under heaven were there that day and heard the wonderful works of God in their own native language. And they knew the apostles and disciples did not know their native language. And they heard the wonderful things of God. And they said, What meaneth this? And Peter, standing up with the eleven, said, This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants and handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. There shall be signs in the heavens above and in the earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke, vapor of smoke to the coming of the day of the Lord. Everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Holy Spirit of God is the spirit of truth that proceeds from the Heavenly Father. Jesus is the one that baptizes us in the Holy Spirit and fire. The fire of God is a spiritual fire that came into that upper room. It was God initiated. It was not initiated by man. True revival is not initiated by man. True revival is initiated by God himself. It's those that seek the Lord. The Bible says those that seek the Lord shall understand all things. The fear of God is in their life. The knowledge of the Holy One is in their life. The Holy One who is Jesus Christ the Lord. Jesus is the head of the church. He's the savior of the body. He's the reviver of the heart of the humble. There's many in the church today that have forsaken the Lord and gone their own way into the to the world and they have embraced the spirit of this world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life the word of God states in 1 John it's not of the father but it's of the world there has to be a repent of heart before God and the church because many have lost their first love they have embraced sin fornication Adultery, idolatry, that's sin in the heart. See, if you're a true believer, the corrections of the Lord will come into your life. He will convict you in your heart of sin and rebellion against him. When That's a part of the sanctification of a believer is turning away from fornication, adultery, all uncleanness, and idolatry. 
The word of God states, Come out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you unto myself, and I will be a father unto you. You shall be my sons and daughters. When a person is contrite in their heart, they acknowledge that only Jesus Christ the Lord can heal and deliver them and to restore them, to recover them, and to revive their heart of fire. When your heart is full of revival, it's a heart that desires to know the Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. For this is eternal life. You can have this great hope and assurance come into your life and the presence of Almighty God to come into your life by repenting before God today, acknowledging your own iniquity before the Lord. When you acknowledge your own iniquity, the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus will cleanse your soul and make you whole. It will affect your mind and emotions. It will affect your physical body and bring health to your body. And the desires of the Father will come to your heart. He will birth inside of you what he called you to be before the foundations of the earth in Christ Jesus. You were created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And those good works are to glorify the Father. Sin does not glorify God. Every bit of sin in this world dishonors God. That's why Jesus came for you. This is the day to be delivered inside of your heart to be revived by the Holy Spirit of God and to be healed inside of your soul by Jesus Christ and Him alone. The Lord knows those that are His and those that name the name of Christ are to depart from iniquity. Thank you for watching this program and have a wonderful week. God bless you. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.